Reddit, what is the strangest thing you have a guy for? In high school I had a guy who would beat up my bullies for me. I have a sloth guy. Three separate family events over the last 15 years. I've called my guy and he's brought a sloth to the party. Edited to reassure people. He runs a USDA certified wild animal rescue and has has his sloth for close to 20 years. He takes extraordinary care of all of his animals. The sloth is not a performing animal no one gets to approach, handle, or pet it. He simply brings it for a short period of time so that people can see it, and he discusses its life, behavior, and care. He does phenomenal work to protect and preserve wildlife many of his animals came to him after being purchased by people who wanted an exotic pet they quickly realized they could not care for. I've got a pineapple guy. Gets me the good stuff, variously called the sugarloaf pineapple, white pineapple, Kona sugarloaf, Kona white, honey cream, etc. It's a pineapple that is sweeter and, crucially, has significantly lower acidity, so it doesn't hurt your mouth or tongue if you eat too much of it. It's good to have a pineapple guy. Edit, for those of you asking how to get your own pineapple guy, you gotta know a guy. And for those who DM'd asking how my guy gets his pineapple, I don't ask and he doesn't tell. That's the whole point of having a guy. I give him money and he gives me the pineapple, no questions asked. Edit 2, yes, I'm seriously talking about pineapple fruit, not weed. Now that weed is legal does anybody actually need a weed guy anymore? I have a mattress gal. She runs a high-end mattress shop and is supposed to dispose of any returned mattresses. I take care of disposal by showing up at the customer's place bringing the disposal mattresses around to any friends or family in need of a mattress upgrade. I got a sweet $4,000 king bed for free and hauling it because it was a return. When I was a waiter in downtown Phoenix 20 years ago I had a street person on retainer. Parking was difficult for lunch shift, our restaurant couldn't slash wouldn't validate employees parking, so we had to use the meters on the street. Since the meters had a two hour limit, you needed to park close enough to be able to run down and feed them in the middle of the lunch rush. Spaces were very limited. One day, soon after starting, I passed the same bum for the third night in a row panhandling. He wasn't at all vocal, just tried doing funny dances and making people smile, then he'd tell you to have a nice night. Never outright asked for anything and was never rude or aggressive. I gave him a couple bucks a few nights in a row, and started to notice him during the day too once we became familiar. The first time I saw him after pulling in for a lunch shift I gave him a handful of change from my coin cup in the console and told him if he fed my meter with it all day I'd throw him some cash again after my shift. Found out then that his name was Mike. Two hours later it's noon 30 and the crew is dashing down to feed their meters, or asking whomever is going down to do it for them. I gave someone a couple of quarters and asked them to check on mine while they were at it, just in case. They were back in 5 minutes reporting that my car was good, the hostess car was good, and two other servers bookending my car were good, all of us until after 2 pm, some homeless guy is feeding all the meters on this side of the block. The next day, as I was making my way around the gauntlet of one way roads surrounding the building housing my restaurant I saw Mike. He was standing in a parking space right by the bottom of the escalator leading to my work and as soon as he saw my car, he pulled his pants leg up and did a little chorus line dance move to get my attention. He'd been standing there holding the spot for me for the past 15 minutes. Thus it began. Mike held a parking spot for me nearly every morning for the next two years. He fed my meter and the meter of any other staff I asked him to. I started keeping car cleaning stuff in my car, Windex, Armor All, and would give him towels from the restaurant to detail it up once a week. He knew what bar I hung out at and where I sat. He'd track me down when meters were about to expire or he needed a buck. Everybody at the restaurant and the bar across the street started calling him my bum. He was my friend though too. His name was Mike. He just didn't live anywhere because life is more complicated for some people. 
But yeah, I had a guy once, a true downtown concierge. I have a fat guy. If I need to get fat I call up the fat guy and I get some. He did breast reductions, tummy tucks and such. Fat is lots of stem cells. I used to have a brain guy. I do medical research. I got a guy who will mold your genitals and cast it in the metal of your choosing. That's his specialty, he does other stuff like jewelry and general handicrafts but he's happy to be known as the metal genital guy. Dude's a character. Edit, a surprising amount of y'all are DMing me about custom cock molds, sorry to break your hearts but he primarily works with vaginas. He's done some cocks, but mostly just friends or local porn stars. If he's to be believed, he's molded around a thousand vaginas. I personally think it's probably more like 200 but I don't know him that well. My uncle has a criminal history, now owns a car business, but still in contact with old friends. He once told me, if I need something, he knows people I don't want to know. Edit, yes guys, he's my guy guy. I got a guy named Fat Tony who occasionally texts me about rare but cheap musical instruments. He's always trying to loop me in on his side hustle of finding instruments on eBay and repairing them for resale. One day I get a text that say yo, lazy clock 7316, this is Fat Tony. I got a Hammond organ for you. $100. And that's how I got my organ. I still have no idea how he got my number or who he really is, we've never met in person. Fat Tony. Horse Seaman. Family all own horse ranches and breed. And once at a convention overheard a woman said she could not find a decent paint male to breed her mare to. I stepped up and shared my connection. Edit, paint male, paint. LOL sorry missed the T and a paint is a multicolored horse with large spots typically brown or black on white. We are beautiful and highly sought after. My family has some rare bloodlines that are beloved for their colors and happy, even temperament. I'm very old. By Reddit standards I should be dead. When I was a kid I was Sabbat Goy for the elderly Jewish couple next door. They were very orthodox and there were a bunch of things they wouldn't do on Sabbat, like turn a light off or relight the furnace. It was okay for me to do it for them, as long as it was voluntary and not a paid arrangement, because I'm not Jewish. They gave us produce from their kitchen garden, but that was not payment. He had the tattoo. Maybe she did too, but she always wore long sleeves. I was glad to help them. I have a guy who will diagnose my weird ailments even if he's he's planting pumpkins, or cleaning out a chicken coop, or nursing injured birds back to health. I've even sent him pictures at 4am of the horrible conjunctivitis that I developed over a 12 hour period. And by 8.30am he delivered a prescription of antibiotic eye drops to my house. I've got a serious egg guy. It's a 14 year old kid that lives just outside of my city. His dad wanted to teach him about budgets and business so he bought him a few chickens and the kid used his allowance to buy food and a chicken coop. Now he has to take care of them, pay for feed and collect and sell eggs for profit that goes back into upkeep and food. And he's making a killing selling below market value. $2 a dozen for farm fresh eggs. He sells to his entire school and church. He's grown his operation to be massive and has hired on a couple friends part time to help. Did I says he's 14 years old? Oh my god it's finally my time. This isn't my guy but still relevant. I am a teacher. When I was doing my student teaching it was at a school with a very high socioeconomic student body and I just could not relate to them. One day a kid comes in all upset and I thought to a chance to connect and I asked him what was wrong. He replied that his dog just wouldn't stop barking and it was ruining his life. I was like okay but still wanted to connect and so was like oh that sucks my dog is really old and has a bad back. He immediately sniffed and wiped the little tears from his eyes and said hang on I've got a guy pulled his $300 Prada wallet from his back pocket and handed me a card. He said with the most serious look on his face that this was quote the best doggy masseuse in the business as if a 
There was more than one guy in that field and B. It wasn't his parents that employed this man but the fifth grader himself. I just said thank you so much and walked away flabbergasted. Action pack, black Mac 10, Junior and his friend Not a pot to piss and starving brothers on a mission Half past two, bring your plan to rob the tow booth GW Bridge, got the weapon concealed, nothing to lose They choose to break the rules at all costs Stick them in Jersey, hit the other side to New York Black and red leather suits and black biker boots One, got the gun, the other one controls the motorbike Adrenaline, pumping, dreams of cash Anybody try to stop them getting lead in their face Believe that, black pack